Hey everyone, and welcome to another uh, video log with me, Garfi. Uh, today I'd like to talk about airbrushing. Um, I'm probably going to split this over two videos. The first video is going to be um, just an introduction to the tools that I use. And um, the second video will be me actually doing some airbrushing. So uh, here we have some models that I've airbrushed um, and painted with a traditional brush. I don't purely just use an airbrush uh, for painting. I do. I use it as a tool to uh, add uh, ease and uh, speed to my painting. So uh, rather than hand base coat this, I'll base coat it with an airbrush and I'll do a little bit of the blending as well, which you can see here uh, with an airbrush. And then I'll pick out all the details and lines and that with a paintbrush. So um, that's my Dark Angels drop pod. Uh, I think I base coated the metals separate, the greens, uh, all with the airbrush, and then uh, painted all the detail by brush. Uh, here's my Imperial Knight. Uh, as you can see, uh, all the yellow was base coated and blended using an airbrush, and uh, the metals were base coated but dry brushed using brush. So uh, I have a full tutorial on how to paint this on Tyler Painters. I'll throw a link in the description. Um, but that's a couple of models that I've used to airbrush. So let's talk about the airbrush. Um, where'd I put it? Here it is. So this is a dual action gravity fed airbrush. Uh, this is available to buy on a website called RDG Tools. Once again, I'll throw a link in the description. Um, and it's uh, an inexperienced, an inexpensive airbrush. Uh, it's kind of like a Taiwanese copy of the more expensive ones. Uh, this will set you back about 35 quid. And they have others on there ranging from 25 to 35. Uh, and it's exactly the same as the more expensive ones. Um, because airbrushes can clog and get messy, and if you're just starting out, these are ideal because if you break it, if it lasts a year, then that's fine. That's no problem. You don't mind replacing that. But if you've got one that's cost you 200 quid and, it, and you've broken it, it's, it's not ideal, is it? So, um, yes, I kind of recommend these. And I've had a few of these. I've been airbrushing for maybe eight years now. And I think I'm on my fourth airbrush. And at £30 each, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, so, why is this called a dual action? Well, it's this button here. Uh, the dual action is um, if you press down it release the air and if you pull back it will pull back the needle releasing the paint so it's kind of dual action uh, that's why they call that that um, gravity fed uh, because the the paint goes in here and gravity feeds it into the airbrush um, this is a uh, air control you can let more or less air through here so you can do finer sprays or wider sprays. Um, this is the airline here that just screws in. It's quite secure. It's quite secure. Uh, this at the back is the needle. That's the locking nut that holds the needle in place. So when you pull that back, it pulls the needle. Uh, this piece here is a adjustable stop. So you can adjust how far back you want the needle to go. So you can uh, adjust how much paint comes out. Um, if we have a quick look here, so take off this little nozzle guard that's to stop you bending your needle when you drop the airbrush, which I have done. Uh, take this piece off and you'll see the uh, nozzle and the needle and pulling that back, you can see the needle disappearing. Uh, the nozzle is a 0.3 on this one, I find that okay for doing uh, these kind of large size models. Uh, you might want to go smaller if you're painting Space Marines, but I prefer to paint my Space Marines with a brush. I might use the airbrush just to base coat them or undercoat them. Uh, so that's the airbrush really. <clears throat> it's as simple as that. Um, cleaning it, uh, you'd want to take it all apart and use brushes and wires to get into it, blast water through it, everything like that. But uh, I'll show you some of the cleaning material, cleaning pieces we use to clean it. Just put that back together. So I have these uh, 
wire brushes here. It's a kind of like a soft bristle. And what you do is you take it all apart and you push these through, clean all the parts individually. Um, I also have these uh, wires, which are quite good. These are great for kind of scraping off hard to stuck on paint flex and stuff like that. And they're bendy as well, so you can you can get them in there and push it down and go both ways and stuff like that. So you'd use those to clean it. And there's also a cleaning pot, which you can use. Um, I tend to use this more for, um, just as a holder, it's quite handy just to have my airbrush and a holder on my desk so I can, it's always upright, I can fill the paint up, that's the perfect height and uh, level. So I quite like this holder. Um, but yeah, for cleaning, you'd fill it up with paint and you'd blast it into this pot and it just keeps all the crap in there so it's quite nice. Um, this is quite expensive, it's basically just a jar for 10 quid. Uh, you could make your own for less, but like I said, it's really handy to have the holder. Um, as you saw, I took some of these out, uh, pipettes. These are good for mixing paint and uh, you wouldn't actually suck the paint up. You kind of tip the paint into a jar. Um, so you take your, take your paint, tip it in. <clears throat> but you'd need some thinners, uh, and that's where this comes in handy. So using these, you can suck up your thinners. I'm running out of this stuff. Place it in there, and then you can use an old brush to mix it together. And once it's mixed together, you can pour it into the uh, airbrush. Uh, you'd never mix inside the airbrush. You'd always mix separately. Um, the thinners I use, and this is the best stuff I've ever found, is uh, Tamiya acrylic paint x28 thinner it's this has lasted me a couple of years and i'm running out now but this was about five or six pound it's brilliant stuff it's really good um and it's an absolute must uh, people are going to ask me in the comments about ratios um it all depends on the paint you're you're actually you can't measure it out it's all about consistency so you want it really wet and liquidy that it can flow through the airbrush no problems but you don't want it so wet that it runs so when it hits the model it just runs like in paint streaks so you're aiming for that kind of consistency wet enough that it doesn't clog the airbrush but not too wet that it you know so always have a test piece of card or something that you can just spray on just to see if you've got the consistency if nothing's coming out you need to add more thinner after a while it becomes second nature and you just mix up paint and you just know exactly you you just know exactly how it should be so uh that's the thinner what else can we talk about so um we have some uh tape here this is masking tape uh, it's proper airbrush stuff. It's low tack. It doesn't leave any goo or gunk or glue on your models. Uh, a couple of def different thicknesses. Uh, always useful just to mask stuff off and stuff like that. Uh, we also have uh, blue tack, um, which is also good for masking off. Uh, not as good as the tape, but a lot quicker. You can mask off really quickly with this. Um, you can also use it to pin, uh, to pin, to stick small pieces to a board and airbrush small pieces without them being blasted off. So uh, blue tack is an essential to your airbrush kit. Um, let's talk next about what powers the airbrush, and that is a compressor. As I said, I've been airbrushing for quite a while and my compressor is still going. Now this compressor was also bought at RDG Tools and it was part of a kit, but you can get this for about 50 quid. Um, I would advise to get the one with the air tank. It sits on an air tank. It will cost you a little bit more. Uh, however, it will be better. But for saying that, I've not got bad results and I've been using this one since well eight years ago it's an absolute workhorse and it's still going and for 50 quid you cannot go wrong um, I've had to replace the uh, water trap recently uh, these do get uh, start eventually these the filters get knackered and you end up having water going into your airline and it will splutter at the other end so this is a replaceable part you can uh, just replace that so how does the uh, compressor work um, I believe inside is a motor and a piston, which uh, 
creates air and pushes air through. Uh, this is the on button. Uh, there's a little handle. This is like a heat sink. This obviously gets very hot. Uh, the whole body gets hot, to be honest. Um, you can get ones with metal casings all the way around, uh, which is probably better. Uh, but when they're selling this old one, they didn't. Uh, here is the uh, this is the pressure gauge, so it tells you how much pressure pressure you're getting. Uh, it normally goes up to about 60 and cuts out, and but the operating pressure, if you've got the airbrush on, it's around 20, something like that. Uh, at the bottom, you can see you've got a regulator, so you can actually let out air or close it. It's just a valve. Uh, this is a water trap release, so if that fills up with water, there's a little bit in there, I think. You know, you can press that and the water will come out. Here's some different adapters to make the uh, the hose fit. You can see I've used the uh, PTFE tape just to make it airtight because uh, the connectors are just metal or metal and the air will release. So you will need to use a proper plumber's tape to um, create an airtight gap. And there's the uh, braided airline, the uh, hose. Um, yes, it kind of chugs away and makes a lot of noise and it's really noisy, so you don't want to be doing it late at night if people are trying to sleep or if you've got kids or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good old workhorse. I've not had to replace it. Maybe need to clean, but yeah, it's good. Okay, so the next thing you'll need if you're, if you're airbrushing indoors is a um, extractor fan. And I'm just gonna adjust my camera to show you the extractor fan. There we go. So this comes as a boxed item and it has a big hose on it. The hose I can poke out my window, uh, it will um, it will stretch out and stuff like that. But the actual box, I'll just show you, opens up and folds out. And creates a little booth like that. I'm not sure how much you can see. Gives you an idea. Uh, this at the back is just a turntable, it's quite useful. And uh, here we have some uh, foam like wadding which uh, catches all the particles. Uh, so when it's turned on, the extractor fan pulls all the particles through this, it catches in here, and out and it, out the back, out the hose, out the window. So very useful. Um, other things you'll need, uh, this isn't 100%, you will still inhale dust particles, so you'll want a dust mask or a proper respirator would be ideal. That's the best thing to get, a respirator. Um, always put your health first, uh, don't take chances, it's not worth it. Um, so I've covered the airbrush, I've covered the uh, compressor, I've covered the extractor fan, I've covered, covered the thinners. Um, so I guess paint wise, uh, I can show you some of the paints I use. Um, for undercoating models, I swear by these. It's Vallejo Acrylic Polyurethane Surface Primer. Uh, I've got white and black. Now the white is incredible. It'll take a few coats, but you will be left with the smoothest white undercoat you'll ever have. Um, whereas aerosols leave a chalky, dusty horribleness, this is the stuff. Honestly, it's great. And the black, um, this stuff, because uh, we spend so much time undercoating models, this will last me a year, and I can do all my models with this for a year, easily maybe longer. This costs about £11, something like that. So when you think a can of aerosol uh, black undercoat could be from £7 to £10 and it lasts a batch of models, the cost savings involved for this will pay for your airbrush. It's really good stuff. Um, it's got self-leveling properties, so you always get a smooth. Even if you clog up the detail, it will level itself out and it won't it's really hard to clog the detail on a model using this stuff whereas with an aerosol it's really easy so that's another benefit it's just fantastic and I can airbrush inside I haven't got to wait for a nice sunny day I can 
set up my extractor, my airbrush, my compressor, and I can airbrush during the day. I can airbrush during the winter. It doesn't slow down production. So yes, these are great. Uh, they are fantastic. Um, now paints, um, I have got some Games Workshop airbrush range paints. Now these are okay. They're not too bad. Um, but to be honest, uh, because they're already thinned, once you've used the paint, you've used the paint, and they're more expensive. So if you buy the normal paints and then just use the thinner, this will go a lot longer, you know, uh, for not much more money. You know, this is lasting me ages. So you can get more paint using thinner than buying the airbrush range. Um, and the other. Uh, the other thing is you can mix your paints as well, so you can create your own and add the thinner, and so it's it's not too bad. I have used um, model color, uh, game color, sorry, uh, Vallejo game color paints in my airbrush. That's fine. They work a treat. Everything works so long as you thin it correctly, um, and yeah. So you need to thin everything. Um, I guess that's it, really. Uh, I I haven't really used any other model air or forge world air or any of those other specific airbrush paints uh, i've just always used the games workshop colors through my airbrush uh, just to match my army painting really i'm using the same paints to paint with it makes sense so i get i guess i'm going to stop it there i think i've covered everything um, next video hopefully i'll be able to show you how i undercoat and models and stuff like that uh, and show you all the kit in use. Uh, so I'm going to stop it there. Thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you like this video. Give me a thumbs up maybe. And uh, I'll throw some links in the description if you're interested in more stuff. Thanks very much. Goodbye.